Hi everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad. Well, it's a great time of year to be targeting garfish. They're an awesome bread and butter species which taste great and are pretty simple to catch. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your own DIY garfish rigs. And the good news is they're very low cost and very simple to learn. Now these rigs can also be used on other species such as mullet and trout. Now do make sure you watch all the way through as I'll share a few power tips at the end which I think you'll find very helpful. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Now I'm gonna walk you through a few different float rig setups. So why don't we run through the list of materials first. The very first thing that you will need is a float. And as you can see, they come in a whole range of different colors and sizes. Now I would highly recommend these pencil quill float types. And that's because they've got nice bright colors, they're very easy to work with, and they balance really nice in the water when you're using very small baits. The next thing that you'll need is a hook, and that will ultimately be decided by the type of bait that you're gonna use. So hooks like these are perfect if you're going to be using baits such as silverfish, small pieces of pippies or prawns, bread and dough, and that is a long shank size 12 with a very thin gauge. Now if you're gonna use baits like maggots, you're gonna go even smaller, and that's a very small fly style type of hook, again in size 12. And that's so you can just pin your bait without killing them so they can move freely on the hook. Now you will need fluorocarbon leader. Now I like to use about three meters length. Now typically I'm gonna be using that in either four pound or six pound. So very nice and light. In the video today, we're gonna to be sticking with four pound, which is what I use most commonly. You're also gonna need a few split shots in various different sizes. And typically you wanna use the least amount of weight that you can get away with. And a couple of optional things that I'll run through in the last rig that we do is some float stoppers and also some red tubing. Now the only tools that you're gonna need is a pair of pliers just to crush those split shots down and just a pair of scissors for those knots. So why don't we get started with our first rig. Now this first rig is the one that I probably use the most. So grab your four pound fluorocarbon leader I'm gonna cut a length that's roughly three meters long. So, okay, it's just one. Okay, two and three. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, just close enough. Okay, cut that. So we're gonna attach this three meter length of four pound fluorocarbon leader directly to the main line of our fishing rod. So if I grab my fishing rod right here, okay, and I've just got six pound braid that is spooled on this rod here. And again, we're just gonna basically run them in parallel with each other, okay? And we're gonna do basically a uni knot on each side. So create a circle, okay? And then wrap that end through the circle about five times. So two, three, four, and five, okay? lubricate and tighten okay and then we're going to do the same on the other side so again just make sure it hasn't tangled up so one two three four and five okay again lubricate and just tighten so you get to this point and then you just pull those two ends together and that's going to tighten up really nicely grab your scissors and cut those tag ends away. Okay, so now you can see our main line and our fluorocarbon leader is joined there by double uni, and you can sort of yank on that. And even though that's really fine line, that's really strong, it's going nowhere. So what you wanna do is go to the very end of this three meter fluorocarbon line now what you wanna do is you want to grab your pencil float. Okay, the first thing you need to do is remove this band which is at the top of the float. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna just feed that band through the line. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to then just also put the float through there. Now the, the purpose of this band is going to allow you to slide that float up and down the line really easily. And I like to just slide that on just underneath that bright colored area. Then all you do is you grab the end of that line and you feed it through that little area there, okay? So now you've got your float attached, okay? And the good thing about this is that you can just slide it up and down the line, basically just using that band. So all you'll do now is grab one of your size 12 long shank hooks and we're gonna tie that on the end, again using just a uni knot. So we're just gonna feed that through the eye. We're gonna make a small circle, and it does get a little bit fiddly to work with when you're working with four pound line. And we're just gonna wrap that through that circle five times. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? and trim away that access tag. Okay, so that's looking great. So we've got our float attached there that can slide up and down the line. And then we've got this little bit of fluoro finishing with that size 12 hook. So grab two split shots. You don't want them too close to the float and you don't want them too close to the hook. You just want to have that nice separation between all those parts. So all you're gonna do is grab your pliers, okay? Feed the split shot onto the line. Close that shut using your pliers. Okay, so we've got one there, which looks great. And then we're gonna do the second one here. Okay, so just feed the line through, grab your pliers. Okay, and just close that shut. That's the first rig done. It's really, really simple. We have got our size 12 long shank hook. Then we've got two split shots, okay, going to this pencil float, which can go up and down the line just by sliding it very easily. And then obviously you've got your three meters worth of fluorocarbon leader that's tied to the main line, in this case, which is our braid, and that's tied by a double uni knot. Now let me show you a quick variation to that. The second line. rig, I've already attached the fluorocarbon leader to the main line using that double uni knot. There's no point showing you that once again. This time we're gonna do two different changes to this rig. So we're gonna use this float instead of the pencil float we had in the last one. And we're gonna also use these small fly type hooks, okay? So the only difference with this time is the band is in a different spot on the float this time. So first what you actually do is you thread the line through, the, through that little circle gauge there. Okay, run that down, okay? Now you'll see on this float this time, it's got these small bands at the end there. So you can actually just take them away, okay? And then what you wanna do is feed your line through these little bands. We're going to then thread that through the end of the float. And a bit like last time, that can now move up and down the line freely, okay? Just by using those bands in place, you can see that's just sliding up and down that fluorocarbon leader. And again, I like to have that length about 50 centimeters as a starting point, and then you can adjust it depending on the depth and the current that you're fishing. So this time we're gonna grab one of these really small fly hooks. Okay, so you can see how small that is, but trust me, you can catch some good fish. I've actually caught plenty of brim above 40 centimeters using these and also some big trout. So don't underestimate its capability. It just pins the fish in a different position, which is actually uh, works really well. So again, all we're gonna do is thread the end of this leader through this hook. I'm gonna tie it using a uni knot with five wraps. Okay, so thread that through, create a little circle and then wrap that around five times. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? Just tighten, okay? Trim away that tag. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two split shots on and space them out nice and evenly so it's actually really balanced. So you're gonna just grab two split shots, okay? Roughly work out the middles, grab your pliers and basically just crimp them on. Okay, and that's our second rig done. Again, that took less than a minute, very easy to do. So again, we've got our three meter length of fluorocarbon leader down to this little float here, which can slide up and down the line. And in the middle of that, we have got two split shots. And then you've got that very, very small fine gauge size 12 fly hook. And now I'm gonna show you one last rig, which is a little bit of a variation to the first two. Now for this last rig, I've already gone ahead and cut a three meter length of four pound fluorocarbon leader and attached it to the main line using a double uni knot. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. So we're gonna grab some float stoppers and that's what they look like if you've never seen them before is you have to grab one of these, okay? And you'll see there's a little loop in there, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your line and you're gonna feed it through one of those holes, okay? So you can see that one there is there just like that. Now the only thing that you do at this point is you hold that nice and tight and we're gonna just slide that bottom one on to your line, okay? And you see it basically just transfers from this packaging now has one less onto your line there and it has that float stopper. Now the theory of this is very similar to the elastic bands that we had earlier. That can just slide up and down your line very easily. And the way that people often use these is they grab their floats, okay? So you might just use a float like this. Okay, we're just gonna thread that straight through the fluorocarbon leader, okay? And you'll see what happens now is that can slide up and down and as soon as it hits that float stopper, it's just gonna stop. So if you wanted to go deeper, you would just slide that float stopper a little bit further up the line. Then we're gonna attach our size 12 hook. Again, we're just gonna have that by a uni knot. So again, just thread that through. Okay. And we're just gonna weave that through five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, trim away that excess tag. All we've got to do now is add a few split shots in the middle there. So again, grab your split shot container. Okay, two split shots, spread them out nice and evenly. Okay, so we're gonna put one there. Grab your pliers, clink that into place. And again, this one here, roughly about there, halfway down. Okay, again, grab your pliers. Lock that into place, and there you go. So that is the third variation of this rig. So you can see now we've got our size 12 long shank hook at the end, we've got two split shots, and then stopping that float from sliding any further is that float stopper. And that's it there. There are three different float rigs that all work really well. They cover a whole range of baits, and they can be used on garfish and a whole other range of species such as mullet, trout, and so on. Now, I did promise you a couple of power tips at the start. So, power tip number one is burley. And when you're targeting garfish, burley is an essential item to keep bringing them into that area that you're fishing. Now, ideally what you wanna do is burley an isolated area probably every 10 to 15 minutes to keep them coming in and keeping that bite active. Now you can go to the stores and buy pre-made burley mixes, or you can get creative yourself and create your own. Put some breadcrumbs, some tuna oil, some cut up pilchards, some cat food, whatever you think, anything that's got some nice scent in it that's gonna bring fish into the area is a great and essential way to catch garfish. Now power tip number two is to use ultralight gear. Now when I'm targeting garfish, I am using stuff like this, which is a one to three kilo rod, which has got a little 2000 size reel on it. 
and that's spooled with either four pound or six pound braid. So you don't want to fish much heavier than this. The other thing that's absolutely key is to make sure that it is a slow action rod. And what I mean by that is that the rod tip is quite whippy. And the reason for that is when you're targeting gars and you see that float disappear and you lift up, you want a lot of give in the rod. That way you don't actually pull the hook straight out of its mouth. So look for a slow action rod and one that's ultra light and that's a perfect setup for targeting gars. And finally, power tip number three is garfish love shallow and weedy areas. And I find often in areas between that two to four meters deep, that's got lots of dark coloration, which is those patches of weed, is where you'll find them. So if you're walking up and down your pier, keep your eye out for those areas that have those weedy zones, and that's where you're gonna find garfish. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this DIY Garfish tutorial video. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, good fishing, everyone.